This video explains how to fill the area in a plot using the polygon function in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you several examples. And in the first example, I will show you how to fill an area in a plot using the polygon function. And for this, we first need to create an empty plot, as you can see in line two of the code. So after running this line of code, a new empty plot window is appearing. And now in the next step, we can use the polygon function to fill a certain area in this plot. And within the polygon function, we need to specify the X coordinates of our filling area, the Y coordinates of the filling area, and the color that we want to use. So in this case, I want to use this hex color code as my color. So after running lines three to five of the code, you can see at the bottom right of our studio that a new filled area is appearing in our plot. It's also possible to modify this filled area within the polygon function, as you can see in the next example in lines seven to 12. So in line seven of the code, I'm once again creating an empty plot window. In lines eight to 10 of the code, I'm using basically the same syntax as in lines three to five. However, then I also specify that I want to show the border of my polygon in red, and I want to change the line thickness of the border. So after running lines eight to 12 of the code, you can see at the bottom right that our field area is changed. And this time we have added a red border with a thicker border line. It is also possible to fill the area below a line plot using the polygon function. And this is what I want to show you in the next example, starting in line 14 of the code. So as a first step, we need to create some example data based on which we can draw our line plot. And we can do that as you can see in lines 14 and 15 of the code. So after running these lines of code, two new vector objects called x1 and y1 are appearing at the top right. Then in the next step in lines 17 to 19 of the code, I'm drawing our line plot, as you can see at the bottom right. And then in the next step in lines 20 and 21, I'm using the polygon function to draw a filled area below my line. And to do that, I have to specify within the polygon function that the X coordinates should be equal to the first value in our X axis vector, the last value in our X axis vector and the vector itself. And to the Y coordinates, we have to assign the values zero and zero and in between the values of the Y vector. So after running lines 20 and 21 of the code, you can see at the bottom right that a filled area is appearing below our line plot. We could also modify the design of this plot by adding the points function to our plot, as you can see in lines 22 to 24. So in this case, I want to add certain points at the data points of our actual vectors. So after running these lines of code, you can see that some squares are shown at the data points in our data. And then we could even add line segments to this plot using the segments function, as you can see in line 25. So after running this line of code, we have added additional vertical lines at each data point. It's also possible to use the polygon function to draw the area below a density. And this is what I want to show you in the next example, starting in line 27. So once again, I first have to create some example data, as you can see in lines 27 to 29 of the code. So after running these lines of code, a new vector object called x2 is appearing at the top right. And this vector object contains random numeric values. Now in the next step, I can use the plot and the density functions to draw our data. So after running these lines of code, a new density plot is appearing at the bottom right. And then in the next step, I can use the polygon function, as you can see in lines 34 to 36. And in this case, I have to specify the X coordinates that start from the minimum value of our density and then I also have to specify the X values of our density and to the Y coordinates, I have to assign the value zero and the Y values of our density. So after running these lines of code, a polygon is added to our plot. And as you can see, the filled area corresponds to the density that we have drawn before. 
it's also possible to add a, another polygon to this plot within a certain range. And this is what I want to show you in the next step. So in line 38 of the code, I'm specifying a range between I want to add another polygon. And in this case, I want to add my other polygon between the range greater than one and lower than 2.5 on the x-axis. So after running line 38 of the code, a new data object called poly range is appearing at the top right. And this data object specifies at which points my new polygon should be added. And then in lines 40 to 42 of the code, I'm once again using the polygon function to draw another polygon on top of our already existing plot. So if you run these lines of code, you can see that we have filled a certain range in our plot with the color black. We can also use the polygon function to fill an area based on the y-axis of our plot. And we can do that as you can see in the next example. So once again, I'm first creating a density plot as you can see in lines 44 to 47 of the code. So after running these lines of code, you can see that another density is added at the bottom right of our studio. And then in the next step, I create another example data object as you can see in line 49. And based on this data object, I will draw a polygon that is only shown between the density that was created before and the density that can be created based on the data object x3. So after running lines 51 to 53 of the code, you can see that our second density was added. So this density is based on the data object x3. And then we have added a filled area between those two density lines. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.